This amazing thing. Start the periscope stream as well. Uh, yeah. Oh, we're periscoping? Periscoping, yes. yeah. We already started here. Oh, wow. So He's we're on live here. on Facebook actually right now. So everybody in India is crazy about the Mi 5 right now. Uh, the kind of traction we've got, I've been monitoring it. It's uh, fantastic. So really? congratulations on the launch. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we should bring it to India. Oh, wait. I already told everybody yes. we're bringing it to India. You are bringing it to oh, India. Man. Yeah, absolutely. The question is when? When? <laughs> when? 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 So everybody wants to know. Um, I don't know uh, when, um, within the hopefully year. soon, within the year. and uh, hopefully soon, hopefully no, soon. No. Uh, I guarantee you it's not going to be within the year, I mean, it'll be within the year, it will be within the year. Um, but it'll be well, well, well within the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The year is, it's a long time, like a year is too far, you're coming out in March in China, April in India. That makes sense. You yeah. want April? Yeah. That's tough. But um, let me think about it. If enough people ask for an April really? launch, we may consider it. You could do a pre-registration thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So what, do you, what do you mean by yeah. take a call. What do you mean by enough people? By what? How many? We will, we enough will people, we've got like five to eight <laughs> Five enough for you? <laughs> um, I, um, you know, I actually think Me5 will do extraordinary well in India. Because... Um, and in many ways, I, I, I actually was thinking about the Indian audience when I was building this presentation. Uh, whenever I do a presentation in India, it feels like I'm presenting to the geekiest audience of all. Uh, because people actually understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, and I even don't have to break it down as much because this is a very technical audience. So, um, uh, so I was actually thinking about that today and I took out some parts of the presentation because I thought they were too techy for the audience here. But when finally we you know, bring this to India and we do some kind of fan or media event, I'm gonna put it all back in. It'll be like a two and a half hour presentation. Okay. Just going like deep inside, then we like yeah. through uh, Just don't disassembly. Tease, don't tease them as much as you did with us with the device. We're gonna <laughs> see it now, we're gonna see it now, and then you didn't show it to us for quite a while. And uh, sitting in the audience, the minute you said, okay, now the device is going to come up and people went up with their cameras and they're like, no, no, it's just a teaser. It was a tackle. So, yeah, there was a lot of teasing. Fish? Oh, not for me, no. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. I ordered pasta as well. Yeah, yeah. So, this is a margarita? Can I have a tag? Sorry? This is a margarita? Yes. Yeah. It's a coca, coca diet also. Thank you. Thank you. But the Mino never made it to India. Uh, uh, the Mino never made it to India. Um, you don't know why? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Mino didn't make it to India for one particular reason. Um, I, uh, we, could, we didn't have the bands. We didn't have all the LTE bands. Mm -hmm. uh, to launch a device in India today, if you want to do a good job, uh, you have to have um, basically all the bands. You have to have uh, three, five, three, five, forty. You would ideally should have forty-one too, for future compatibility with B, uh, B S N L. Wait, did I say this right? Yeah. Uh, and but at least you want to have uh, the other three, three, five, and forty. Uh, we didn't have it. Uh, that's why we didn't launch. Um, you might guess that Mi Five has all the bands that you need. It. It's so thanks to the Snapdragon 820, it's like pretty much one of the most powerful processors on a family device, right? Sorry? <coughs> Snapdragon 820. What, what's your relationship with Qualcomm for the Xiaomi Mi 5? Do you want pasta? Yes, I want to use the pechuga of pollo milanesa with patatas, can it be? No, we don't. Pero tienes que estar está en el menú. Pedimos pedimos ayer. Chuga milanesa. Sí. That's the Spanish or the Russian of you, Baba. Ah, tal vez sea el. Eh, ¿Tienen tienen pasta bolonesa? No, bolonesa no. ¿Qué tienen de pasta? Está ya tiene. Ah, one second, guys. Sorry. Perhaps you go and French ordering something of the menu. So yes, the idea is something new there as well. That's me, uh, Varun, 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 Javed. 
So the entire uh, India crew at MWC is we're having lunch with Hugo. Sorry guys, I was just wondering, I haven't eaten in a few hours. No so. problem. So yeah, <laughs> we must be having a busy day, back to back meetings, back about the Mi 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You liking it? Very, very much. So we're talking about Snapdragon 4, 4 yeah. A20, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so uh, I don't know how much you guys know about uh, A20, but um, Qualcomm switched over uh, for the A20 from uh, from from the uh, from the at the time A57 architecture to the Cryo architecture, which is their internal. Uh, it's still like uh, obviously uh, ARM. Uh, Dieta es el. Sí, sí. No, ah, perfect. 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 So much gain, even in, even though they're just a generation apart. I mean, literally double the CPU performance from 810 to 820. Um, so 820 is by far uh, the top of the line uh, processor um, in Qualcomm's lineup. You know, you might want to guess what the second one is currently. Do you guys know? I'll give you a hint. I may talk about it next week. Yeah, six, 650, 650 series. Uh, yeah, That's 650 right. series. That's right. right. So they are the two top processors for the call, call, A20 and 650. Um, but A20 has the cryo architecture. Uh, it's using a slightly different 14 nanometer manufacturing process, uh, which is also also makes it much faster. Um, and I think where Qualcomm really nailed it, and this is part of the cryo architecture, is uh, thermal control. Yes. Uh, you know, A10 was a bit hot. To <laughs> keep it yeah, to keep it mild, right? Um, so I think Qualcomm really nailed it with with A20, and uh, I've I've read all of the reviews, uh, and I can tell you for sure it's the best reviewed processor they've had in the last three generations. Uh, I, I'm I'm kind of having glimpses glimpses of 801, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean 801 was a terrific terrific yes. success. This feels like another big thing like 801 <laughs> happening again. Um, so very optimistic, and we work pretty closely with them, uh, not only on the, the engineering part, but they also help us with field testing, lab testing, certification, a bunch of things. Um, so reason why we'll be able to bring uh, Mi 5 to India potentially sooner than many people might even think is uh, is that we've been working closely with Qualcomm. A lot of uh, viewers from India saying hi to Hugo. Hey guys, <laughs> have some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why no 2K display on the Mi 5? Some people are asking. Uh, you really don't need a 2K display on a 5-inch device. Is, End yeah. of story. I would take battery life over yeah. Absolutely. 2K display on a phone. Absolutely. Um, instead, we put our investment on the uh, backlit display, uh, which is, has a 16 LED uh, arrangement, which is more so than what you'll find on any display around 5, inch, five inches. Instead, in fact, we picked a 5.15-inch display uh, because that would give us a little bit more room for the extra LEDs. Um, so that we can get to 600 nits. Uh, 600 nits is a hell of a bright display. Uh, it's almost like uh, blinding if you turn it all the way up and you're not in a very bright environment. Um, anyways, um, I'm, I'm sort of yep, you know, going in random directions here. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another question that's popping up is uh, Android uh, Marshmallow update for any of the other Mi phones that are already available in India? Uh, yeah, so we're working on that. Uh, I wish Jay was here because he would give you a very specific update. Okay. Um, but um, we uh, we're working on or working on that, and we are hearing fans pretty loudly and clear on that. Uh, in addition to uh, in, in addition to unlocking bootloader unlocking, uh, we're launching a new version of the PC Suite, which is going to help a lot of your viewers. I'm sure going to ask this question. Uh, that's going to help with that with that problem. Uh, a lot of MIUI forum fans have been asking for the same. Uh, What's the difference between two Snapdragons? Uh, one, one is 1.8 in the MI5. 2.15. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they're, they're the same, they're the exact same uh, uh, processor just running at a slightly different frequency. But why did you opt for a slightly small one in one variant and faster one? Um, it, it's primarily so that we could have uh, the right uh, price tiering, uh, you know, in, in having all the, uh, the SKUs. Um, it's a pretty involved rationale. I can explain it to you uh, more later if you want to hear. Um, and uh, but the reality is that you really can't tell the difference between uh, Snapdragon A20 running at 1.8 or running at 2.15 gigahertz. You cannot tell the difference. It's mainly for uh, better optimization of the resources on the device 
the hardware? Yeah, it, it's a different balancing, uh, uh, and it's mostly so that we can have kind of a spectrum between the highest end and, and, the, and, the, and the entry level. But um, anyone, I think, would be pretty I happy Pro. with. Yeah. The, I'm getting yeah, one. I'm the, getting the Mi Five Pro. So. You, I think anyone would be happy with with any of the versions. I think I think it, it was uh, with same with the 800. Also, you had uh, 2.26 and. Uh, drifting a little bit away from the phone, another couple of questions that popped uh, were uh, about uh, your product portfolio. It's so wide uh, and it isn't available in India. Uh, so any plans to bring your uh, any additions to the product portfolio in India? You mean beyond phones? Beyond the phones. Phone. Uh, yeah, so we've been steadily bringing more products. Um, and uh, it, 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 for example, so we have, we have more audio products. We have all of our power, power bank SKUs uh, in India. We have more things coming. Uh, there may or may not be uh, an announcement next week about things beyond phones. Um, right. You know, uh, uh, wait, were you recording? <laughs> Sorry. Everyone is. So, uh, can we rewrite? <laughs> oh, no, we're live. We're live, yeah. we're live. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so can we, can we talk about something else? <laughs> so we, we uh, I mean, we're constantly working on uh, new products that we can bring. Um, uh, so one step at a time. You know, the thing to keep in mind is that anything you launch uh, in India in particular has to go through BIS certification, yes. and uh, it's a very long process, right? So we really have to be very, very selective in what we choose. Uh, Even uh, Me TV is, me TV is up popping like up four, on my five screen times, four, five times, just from the corner of my yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I would love something. to. I would love to bring Me TV to India. It, it, it just will take time because the certification requirements are quite heavy, actually. Okay. Uh, it's actually become harder and not easier. Uh, to launch, uh, you know, products in India, but but we're up for the challenge. No problem at all. We're building a big team in India precisely for that reason. Well, you explain why is nobody has done ceramic back before. Yeah. Why is just keep it to the Mi Pro? Why not on the Mi Five? Yeah. So um, why hasn't anyone done ceramic back before? When I was preparing uh, this presentation, uh, which we started a couple months ago, <laughs> I actually did a lot of research on this. I, I asked the same question: Why hasn't anyone done it? Uh, I found press releases from a number of OEMs, even from like a year and a half ago, um, talking about it. Um, and uh, you know, and to be clear, we're not the very first ones using ceramic uh, uh, out there. You know, the OnePlus X, for example, which is a great product, uses ceramic, and you know, they're they're a great company. Um, but uh, I think we're the first ones using it with a 3D, with a big 3D curve, right? Like applying ceramic to a to a pretty accentuated 3D curve uh, uh, surface, uh, which is definitely not easy. Um, uh, the camera, the, the sorry, the ceramic uh, finish is more expensive. Uh, the material costs more money, uh, but also it takes a much lengthier manufacturing process. So if actually we wanted to make every single Mi 5 with ceramic back, the quantity would be much smaller. Can we have the Mi 5 in your hand? Um, yeah, Mi 5 is right here. Yeah. So that's the Mi 5, guys. Look at this. So, beautiful device. I'm cool. Check out the camera, by the way. <coughs> okay, it's pretty much flush. You can the see device. there's almost no camera. Yep. It's because it's flush. completely flat. Yep. Look at that. Cool, right? Um, yeah, so this is a beautiful device. Um, and we, it borrows a lot of the design lines from, um, from Mi Note, uh, but really takes it to a new level. Um, in you know, On Mi Note, uh, there was a curve and then a flat line on uh, Mi 5. It's basically a continuous curve all the way, which starts with a glass and then continues with a metal. Um, it's a pretty new design. I love how it's kind of shrunk the Mi Note Pro into like a more powerful device. Normally, the shrinking it becomes yeah. probably less performant or less specs. It's like a mini device, but this is basically mini with the maximum <laughs> specs. 3,000 milliamp hour battery on a phone that's 129 grams. And I uh, it looks nice. And I, I didn't even talk about IR today because you I didn't, didn't have time. You didn't, you didn't, didn't. Yeah, IR is awesome for me. You can turn off the TVs in the bar. Or yeah, I didn't even have time. Want to change channels without we don't have the remote. This is like the only phone <laughs> for 20 and IR. This is a good talking point. I hadn't thought about this. <laughs> IR um, is pretty good. Yeah, IR is right here. Um, the other thing that's really cool, it's kind of hard to see, um, but it's probably the coolest demo that you can do with, with this device, um, is, uh, is actually the four axis uh, OIS. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, uh, can you actually see the sen oops? Can you see the sensor moving when I do this? 
you have to look closely, but you can actually see how it tries to compensate for the shaking. Uh, it's actually pretty unbelievable. You have to look very closely. Ideally, someone can shoot a close-up video with a macro lens and show it moving. I actually would love to see that video. If any fans uh, have that kind of equipment, let me know. Uh, maybe you should borrow my Mi 5. Uh, but I would really love to record that. It's, um, it's pretty incredible. It's like having you know, a floating camera that's hanging off by a, a bunch of semi-elastic wires. And then w whenever you pull that platform, it kind of stays, right? And it compresses. The video that we, uh, that we showed today, which we'll publish uh, online, it's pretty amazing. How, how it can do that. Uh, so why Type-C? You had a Mi 4C which was Type-C, but the rest of the products have been mostly on micro USB. Yeah, so this is Type-C. Yeah. Uh, I didn't talk about that, but for, for you to take full advantage of uh, Quick Charge 3.0, mm -hmm. of course, uh, you need you need Type-C. It's USB 3.1 standard speeds or 3.2? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. And Quick Charge 3. Um, and uh, so, quick, so Quick Charge 3 will actually take advantage of whatever voltage you give it um, and it will perform best uh, if you give it 9 volts at 1.2 amps. And does it heat up um, too? I think it has some thermal um, as well, right? Yeah, so it um, doesn't. Uh, this is the most amazing thing about this device. Its thermal, thermal performance is very good. And it's not just the processor, it's not just Qualcomm's work, but it's a lot of the optimization that we do as well. Um, you know, we, uh, we learned a lot with Mi4i, let's put it that way. Uh, really learn how to optimize things even when you don't have necessarily that much to work with uh, because of some hardware issue uh, but we learned a lot um, so what you'll find with our products this year with me 5 um, uh, with Redmi Note 3 as well is that we're, we're doing really well on thermal control uh, we have a an Explorer program for the Redmi Note 3 and we've been challenging yeah, I've the Redmi the, tweets, yeah. the Redmi Note 3 explorers to like make the phone get hot and no one can make it happen. So it's a it's a good thing. It's a good Other thing. Other than unlocking and looking at the phone, what else can we use the fingerprint sensor for? Oh, I'm saving that for next week. <laughs> um, if you come, you'll find out. So all the fingerprint features uh, uh, that are available on Mi 5 are also available on Redmi Note 3. Oh, okay. But I'm saving the story. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the display patents that you spoke about earlier uh, during the presentation? Um, so I, I can't go into a lot of detail, um, uh, both because um, I mean these these are somewhat confidential, but also because they're really really deep, okay. deep technologies that I am still trying to understand. Okay. Um, but for example, we've already been awarded twenty one patents. These are patents that were already granted to us. Hmm. We applied two three years ago, and they've been now granted to us. Um, so 21 patents only on display technology. And to be clear, we don't make displays, right? We don't make displays. We source the components, you know, the LCD, the LED, the, you know, the uh, display um, uh, processor and so on. And we put all of it together, the glass, etc. So, but we have special techniques that we've designed to really put the whole thing together that we think are very unique. So we've patented those. Uh, and amongst those 21 patents, there's a couple of US patents already also. Yeah. This one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. So, another question popped up. What was that? <coughs> I've got 120 people following this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, I'm ahead. I'm 250. <laughs> okay, net is a little slow. Okay. How much of a performance gain will we see with the DDR4 plan? Uh, DDR4 is double the speed of DDR3. It's really fast. Uh, you know, it, it gets to a point, of course, where proving these things requires sophisticated benchmarks. Uh, but the jump from DDR3 to DDR4 is actually, it actually affects um, gaming and things like that. Um, so uh, I think it's a good jump, so, an important so, one. So you've got DDR4, then you picked up storage. For storage, you took UFS 2.2. UFS 2, yeah. So combined, in how much, you said the phone is super fast. The, the videos, the two videos you showed over. Yeah, I mean that onto two benchmark that I showed you is really a combination of all of these, all of these different tech breakthroughs. Uh, one of my colleagues called them tech hacks, because like it's almost like black magic. You're putting all these cool things, yeah. these uh, things together in a way that just comes <laughs> to amazing performance. Um, so memory speed, bus speed, uh, 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 as well as uh, uh, 
you know, uh, retrieval speed uh, matters a lot for the benchmarks. They both have help with that on the two score. So somebody is telling me I'm going to be breaking the Ante 2 benchmark score itself, the meter itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, so. And what's interesting is that when we give the phones to fans and we ask them to see what they can do, they can come up with even higher scores. Because they're like, cool the phone down, they do all these crazy things, and they manage to go even beyond. So I, I'm expecting 140,000, 142,000 to not be the upper limit of what Mi 5 can drive. So you spoke about the new you have uh, file system you're using, kind of storage you're using on the NFC, storage. NFS, uh, 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 sorry. The USB, uh, uh, UFS? UFS 2.0. UFS 2.0. Yeah. Yes. So, and also 100 gigs, not most phones are, I think not beyond, even, 60, even 64 is not too common now. It's probably 16 or 32. Right. How the jump to 128, how Xiaomi is going to lead that? You know, um, when we launch a flagship, we try to beat our fans' expectations. Um, and we decided that to beat our fans' expectations this year, we were going to go big on memory as well. Right? So 128 um, UFS uh, is pretty much unbeatable. What is the advantage uh, of UI 7 on Android M over the Android 5.1? Um, it inherits <laughs> all of the Android M features and all of the UI 7 features. So, you know, think of it as the best of both worlds. So, so you get better battery, you get better memory management, everything is combined on you. Everything is combined. Uh, obviously, the new permission system, uh, on-demand permissions, which Android M uh, uh, gives. Um, uh, but then because of Android M, you, you have more fingerprint functionality, for example. You have all the fingerprint APIs that are available through third-party apps. So all those become, you know, become uh, available. Um, so, um, really, is about combining the best that the two have to offer. Okay. Again, away, unfortunately, from the phone, is that <coughs> are you planning anything content driven in India for the phone? Will you be generating local content or is there something like that in India? Um, uh, nothing that I would specifically talk about right now, uh, but it's definitely something we're considering. Uh, <laughs> it's what we do as an internet company, right? We, are, we have a full content offering. Uh, but I'd be very curious to hear what you guys might recommend. What do you think? Uh, what do you think we should do? People have tried uh, with uh, audio streaming, <laughs> love apps there. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. also want to try the stock Android. Mm -hmm. Stock Android. Stock yeah. Android. Yeah. You can. That's why we make, you know, Unlocked these phones them. unlockable, yeah. and we make sources, you know, sources available, and so support. It's possible. A few people were talking about putting um, Synogen and other operating systems on a uh, Xiaomi phone. Of course, it we encourage runs, it. Yeah, and it runs very well. Yeah. So one of the questions was, any uh, any plans to launch with a different OS or with Synogen or those options? Um, so no plans um, at the moment. You know, we, we did a we had a a community uh, uh, initiative last year with Microsoft, uh, where uh, users who had a China Unicorn version of Mi 4 mm -hmm. could actually flash Windows 10 mm -hmm. onto their Mi 4s, and a lot of people did it, and they were they were excited to play with it and so on. Um, you know that was a successful program, so we actually launched um, a Windows 10 version of Mi Pad, Mi Pad yeah. which I even talked about today, uh, and, and that was also success. It was a small experiment, mm -hmm. uh, you know. But these are isolated experiments. Uh, you know, we really are very committed to the UI because uh, it's what allows us to really build our business model. Uh, and very committed to Android. So we, we don't expect to do anything uh, different for the time being. We're always happy to see fans try things out. Right? So when enough fans ask us for something, we'll figure out a way to make it happen. Right. VR, it's a big thing this time at MGC. Right. Uh, everyone's doing it, everyone has this CCTV cameras. What are your views on it? Yeah. Uh, very intrigued by VR. Uh, I think we're, we're at the very, very early days of the second wave of VR, right? Because VR was a thing like 10 years ago, if you guys remember. Very clunky. So this is the second wave of VR. Of course, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a real deal now. I think we're just beginning to see what's possible. Um, you know, right now, the, uh, the VR experiences that people are really excited about are all, they require a full room to be set up. Uh, you guys may have tried some of these demos already. Yep. I mean, it's amazing stuff, right? But I mean, people are not gonna dedicate a whole room in their house 
to setting something up. I mean, I certainly don't have a spare room in my house um, that I could do dedicated to this. So I think, but it's very important to experiment with these high-end systems uh, first. Um, I think that in the next couple of years, we're going to see that technology come to mobile devices, uh, and I think that's going to make a big difference. The, the key thing for me is being able to, to hit accurate, continuous frame rate, which is still not possible today on mobile. Uh, it looks like Android N is going to help with a lot of that. Um, and uh, you need to have transversal um, movement detection. It's actually just like our IS camera. Right now for mobile VR, you have rotational, right? So it assumes that your head is stuck in one place. But what if you do this? What if you do this? Like, can, you, can I look around an object? You can't do that with mobile VR. There's some demos, but we can't, can't really do that with mobile VR today. Uh, we need more sophisticated sensors. They exist, but they just have to get into these phones, right? So that you can have, uh, I don't know how this is called. Maybe you can ask uh, the, the, some of your fans if they remember the name. Uh, it's a kind of parallax effect, right? That, that you have to, until you can do that with a mobile uh, headset, I think it'll be hard to have VR at the quality that you see, uh, for example, with Oculus. Um, but of course, everybody's working on this. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, you know, we're, con we're paying a lot of attention to this space. Uh, VR for gaming was brilliant. Like at the HTC booth, they had uh, yeah a small demo of the Vive in a, in a kind of a real world situation. So the space between your uh, desk and where you're sitting to play a game wasn't much, and they just had one of the sensors yeah, yeah, for yeah. A PC game, and it was a dogfight in space. It was awesome, and it was so epic. Amazing. It was one of the most immersive. Thing. After getting getting over the initial. Uh, craziness of you know a little bit of nauseous feeling a little bit but after that for the next 20 minutes of that demo I was completely immersed I think he also gave yeah, one yeah I the, tried it it was like <laughs> mind blowing I think one of the best reactions so yeah. far but then the price how many people would buy an $800 headset yeah. and for that you need a thousand dollar PC, PC. Yeah. and the Oculus is, Rift is, this is how it starts. so high so yeah. it's, this is how it starts and I mean technology moves so fast you look to, you look at the speed with which Formula One mm -hmm. technologies come down to consumer vehicles these days yeah. It's like within a couple of years. Um, so I'm pretty confident that uh, by next year, like by this time around next year, we'll start seeing not quite that mm. on mobile phones, but more than you expect. Project Tango mm. is something Google is why, is why did you pick up video calling as one of the big things that we discussed? Why video calling? Do you think it's the yeah. next thing that you'll pick up? So, um, you know, video calling um, uh, is a very interesting area where nothing has happened. Uh, of course, you've had Skype and FaceTime, and in China we have WeChat uh, video, we have QQ video. Um, but these are just straight up, I want to talk to you, I just want to see you and hear your voice kind of experiences. Um, when you look at what Snapchat, for example, has done with recorded video, right? Like how much they've managed to overlay on top of recorded video. Um, there's potentially so much that can do can be done with live video, right? So um, that's why we decided to invest internally into this app, which we've launched called Me Video Calling, um, and it's just a very different idea. We'll see. We'll see how it goes, but it's a very different concept of something that you can do. It's very very playful. It's very interesting. It's, very it's a very interesting idea, right? So um, especially the part that you minimize, the, you minimize your uh, yeah. and play something on the back or right. just check your emails while continuing to do a video. Yeah, that's very interesting. Exactly. So, um, so we're excited um, with that that team, and because to really have a good experience, you have to have a lot of people using it, right? So rather than just releasing it for our phones, we released it uh, in in the Play Store, sorry, in the app stores, in Android app stores, as well as uh, uh, the iOS app store uh, in China. So we'll see how it goes, and we'll bring it to India as well. In the camera, are there any new modes? Because this is a completely new system. So are there any new modes? You, you skipped that slide completely. I didn't even match take a shot. Is there something <laughs> um, we have a few things. Uh, nothing dramatically new uh, yet. Uh, but our manual mode is much better. Uh, we have really good tilt shift, uh, which is actually much more useful than I thought. Um, but uh, for the time being, uh, nothing nothing particular. Um, but wait until MIUI 8. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so before we log off from here, any message to your fans in India? You could just look in and tell them what you want to tell them, and we can log off. Um, we would love to see you guys, as many of you as can make, in Delhi next week on March 3rd. Uh, we're having a big celebration uh, for um, an upcoming device that everybody knows about, Remy Note 3. Um, uh, come apply uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, we have applications open right now. Uh, we absolutely would love to see you, and if you can't make it, uh, definitely make sure to tune into the live stream. Uh, that's going to be next Thursday, March 3rd. Can't wait to see you guys, and thanks for tuning in. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Hugo.